What up, K Rugs, the sober dog, coming at you, beautiful Florida. Wanted to do a video outside, but it's too damn windy. <clears throat> anyway, so wonderful vacation. Anyone thinking recovery isn't real or isn't possible? The wedding, the person's wedding I came down here for, me and this person, and I know he doesn't mind sharing this because me and him have done videos together. Me and him were doing 15 to 18, upwards of 20 bags of dope and coke a day. And now I'm down here, he's sober. A bunch of people in the wedding were sober. I'm sober, we're down here, I'm enjoying his wedding. And that's all due to recovery. Getting clean and sober, making it happen. And he's living a great life. About to have a little baby with his new wife as, as of yesterday. So it's absolutely possible. And a couple takeaways from the vacation. Every vacation I've ever went on in the past, <clears throat> I had people approach me probably within two to three days to get dope or coke. You know, get weed, get dope, get coke, get some drug, local drug, whatever. I've not had anybody approach me for that. And I was thinking about it like, am I just at a nice place? I mean, the hotel I'm at is okay. It's nothing, you know, it's nothing like superior to any other place. It's not any expensive top of the line, this or that. And uh, no, I, I started to really think about it. Not at all. What it is, is I'm not running in those circles. Every other time I'm, down, I I'm on vacation or have been in the past, I'm seeking that stuff out. I'm drunk, I'm walking all over the place. I'm smoking weed everywhere I'm walking. Um, my nose is going crazy. I'm hanging out with people who are doing drugs. We're hanging in areas where drugs are around and prevalent. So those people see and they could see it in me and approach me. Now I'm not doing it. That's not what I'm actively seeking. And I don't find it and it works out for the best. So that just made me really think of, don't be involved in those circles and, and stay away from the kind of BS and it'll be that much less chance I'll have of running into that. <clears throat> also, at the wedding, you know, when it was very great, wonderful, and uh, there was, you know, just the typical how a wedding goes is, you know, everything's great, and then everyone's eating, and then the drinks start flowing, you know. There was a good amount of people there in recovery, but not everybody. So, naturally, I hope people that aren't in recovery can have a glass of wine, enjoy themselves, you know, enjoy their vacation. Um, but that's when the alcohol starts flowing and people start getting their energy from the alcohol and doing all that type of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But for me, it is, okay, that's time to kind of get myself going, get out of there a little bit. For me at that point, it's now kind of, okay, everyone's, you know, the, the, the alcohol has given a lot of people that kind of, you know, courage to dance and mingle and do all that. And I could be a little socially awkward at that point. I'm not really mingling and dancing as much as I probably should be because it was always the alcohol that gave me the courage to do that and to be, you know, make kind of a fool dancing around and all that fun stuff. So at that point, it's just, I politely am like, okay, time to go. One of my sponsors always said, if you don't be long, don't be long. And that makes so much sense to me. I was there all day for six, seven hours, hanging out, you know, with everybody. The groom, who's my best friend, completely understood when I was like, uh, <clears throat> you know, respectfully, I think it's time for me to go. He was like, yeah, me too. I wish I could, <laughs> you know, and uh, he wanted to go too and just go home and relax. And, you know, so it's those are the points when it's kind of like, all right. I know where I belong and where I don't belong. And not that I don't belong there. I had so many great people and support and everything. But the longer I sit there and watch friends and family and other people drinking, 
the more drinking starts seeping into my head about having one, having two. And I've never had one beer a day in my life. I've had a thousand or zero. Not literally a thousand, but I have 20 beers or I have zero beers. There's no such thing as Kyle ever having a beer or a glass of wine or a smoke of a joint or a line of Coke. It's, you know, two eight balls of Coke or, uh, you know, two 12 packs or whatever. So at that point in time, it just kind of politely get out of there. And that worked out fine. Also, I did get to see, you know, a lot of people that I got to see the mixture of some people who, you know, did probably drink a little too much. They did some things they probably regret. And that's all right. It is what it is. You know, nobody got hurt. Nothing bad happened. But, you know, I was there. I was that person who did that for years. I was the one today when everyone was like, dude, did you see how drunk he got? He did this. He jumped off that. He... He was dancing with those people. He fell on the dance floor. He spilled the cake. Blah, blah, blah. So, and I know those people are probably, you know, maybe feeling it today a little bit. Uh, maybe a little upset they did whatever they did. But it doesn't matter. It, you know, it is what it is. And that's something I just see. I don't judge them or blame them for it or try not to. And just learn from it. Like, okay, I was there. Hopefully I don't have to ever go back there. I'm not there right now. And I kind of leave it off at that. So during the wedding, when I was thinking about leaving, I kept pouring into me, you know, in my head feeling guilty. Like I got, you know, I should be mingling more with people. I should, uh, I feel bad if the groom says anything, you know, he's my best friend. I don't want to leave his wedding early, all this stuff. And the funny part is, by the time I even went upstairs, changed out of the tux and stuff, came back down, talked to two or three people, it was probably a 20 minute process, a bunch of people had already left and all those are the ones in recovery. And then I talked to the groom and he was like, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> like, I don't feel bad at all. Do what you gotta do, you've been here all day. And that just makes me think how I overthink all this stuff. I feel guilty, what if I, you know, should I hang around more? Do I gotta be uh, social this and that and spend two, three hours walking around socializing with everybody? And no, and at the end of the day, I gotta do what I gotta do to put my sobriety first and anybody on the world that understood that was this person, the groom, because he's in that situation himself all the time. So once I put that aside and realized I did what I had to do. I was respectful to everyone around. And now it's time to, you know, respectfully bow out. Made it that much easier. You know, stayed, helped him out a little bit, got out of there and got home and went to bed sober. So we do what we got to do. Sobriety's got to come first. And I know that could be a tough statement for some people. You know, how can you say sobriety over my kids? Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> I don't have kids and I know people always, you know, are going to say, well, you don't understand. Well, I don't really need to. And here's why. Sobriety has to come before your kids. Just like if you had diabetes, if you had diabetes and you were going into a, a you know, going into a diabetic coma and you needed your insulin and your son or daughter said, can we go outside and play? Or can you take me to school? You'd say in a minute, let me take my shot. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to be dead and then you can't take them to school anyway. So sobriety is no different. If I, if my kids say, you know, and I don't have kids, hypothetically, daddy, can we go play? Can we, can you take me to school We're running late? Whatever. I got to go here. I got to go there. <clears throat> I can say respectfully, give me five minutes. I got to make a phone call, call my sponsor or after school, if they want to go to the playground, okay, I got to do, you know, this five to six is my meeting after that. Because if I don't do that stuff, I'll be back drinking and drugging. And then when I'm drinking and drugging, I'm absolutely of zero use to them. Because then I put drugs way before them, which hate to say it, but all the, you know, parents out there who are addicts put drugs before their kids plenty of times. 
So by putting the sobriety first, I'm actually doing the best possible thing I can if I really love my kids, because I'm keeping myself the physically, mentally, and emotionally in the best place to take care of them. An hour a day for my meeting or whatever I need to do keeps me in my good place, and that allows me to be the best parent, best brother, best son, best whatever possible. By not putting that first, I slowly start to slide, drugs and alcohol come back into the picture, and then I'm absolutely nothing. That's my insulin. I need it. I need the, you know, my meeting, a call of my sponsor, whatever I got to do, keeps me in good shape, and then I could be way better of a parent, son, brother, whatever, by doing that. You know, yes, the kids might have to wait an hour to go to the playground or whatever. That's the medicine, you know, that's what I need for the day.